And in Cambridge, the city's newest theatre, The Town and Gown, is well into its run of a Christmas show with a twist. A live radio musical version of Miracle on 34th Street. I went to meet the cast as they warmed up for a performance last week. It's only me here, along with the director, Carl. Let me come over here and have a chat with Carl first. I'm looking at the stage set here at the Town and Gown Theatre, which is your typical black box theatre, one room, the stage on one side tonight. You've got this checkerboard floor. It almost looks like an old-fashioned dance floor. A radio piano at the back of the set. And then I love this, being a radio person. Five old-school radio mics yes. arranged at the front of the stage. Yeah. This play is described as a live musical radio play version of Miracle on 34th Street. What does that mean for yeah. an audience? It's quite unique. It's, it's a musical. It's a full, full musical. It's told in four and five part harmony, very similar to barbershop style in the 1940s. So um, musically, it's beautiful. What the, the radio play element brings to it is a creative way of telling a story that's familiar to you, whether you saw the, the Richard Attenborough film in the 80s or the, the much older version, um, and giving it uh, uh, an interesting way of being told. So the cast um, not only tell the story of Miracle on 34th Street as actors, in a 1940s radio studio. They create all the sound effects using innovative methods. For example, um, when Susan runs across the snow, one of the guys is doing footprints on cornflakes to create that sound effect. But as, a, as a, a member of the audience at a live studio broadcast, you see how they make these sounds. So you get, you get a bit of an experience on two different levels. So this is like the Edinburgh Fringe, because you're a fringe theatre, yeah. crossed with the Archers, crossed with Miracle on 34th Street. That is how I should have put it on the website. <laughs> and maybe people would have got it sooner. <laughs> There's always next year. OK, let's come on stage and talk to some of the cast members. The lady in the lovely... How can I describe your dress? It's like a, an A-line shape, cinched in at the waist, navy and bright green tartan with a fur stole around the neck and a pearl necklace. Oh, I think that was a perfect description. Tell, <laughs> tell me about your character. Well, I play an actor playing the character of Doris Walker, who is Susan Walker's mother. She uh, is organising the parade for Macy's toy store, well, Macy's department store, sorry, um, and she's uh, not one who believes in Santa Claus, Father Christmas. Uh, so the whole play, the whole radio musical is following the story of how her and her child get on board with the fact that Santa Claus is Santa Claus, Chris Kringle is him. So it's like a, a journey that you go on with them. And we're in, what, the second week of December, a couple of weeks to go until Christmas. Are you now ready for Christmas and super excited because you've been living Christmas already, or are you sick of it? <laughs> Not sick of it. In a panic, though. I was saying, actually, earlier to some of the other guys, I was like, um, I feel like we've been in the show and we've been so wrapped up in it, I've had no time to do any Christmas shopping yet, and now I'm in full-on panic. But we're still only on the 9th of December, so I can chill out, I think, really. Yeah, sure, sure. You... you... <laughs> Keep saying right. that yeah. and it'll become true. <laughs> it'll be fine. Let's talk to this gentleman as well, wearing oh, no, a fabulous no. kind of jacquard silk bow tie and a waistcoat and a tweed suit. Who are you in this performance? Thank you very much. Well, I'm one of the character actors in the piece. So Laura and I, we play about ten characters each, which is part of the fun of the radio play dynamic that you see us jumping between microphones, playing all these different zany characters. Because um, there's a lot of, like, silly comedy in the show. The, there's a lot of heart as well, obviously. Um, so the story of Chris Kringle and the little girl who finds that she believes in him, but then you've got a lot of zany people, um, like, surrounding that story. So do you do lots of voices? I, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, there's a lot of jumping between um, various different characters. Some of them talk to each other. Um, <laughs> which is also a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. Oh, go on, give me a bit of dialogue between two of your characters. <laughs> this sounds brilliant. Oh, my word. I can't, I can't think of any now. I want this spot. 
Or give me just a couple uh, of the voices that you oh, do. Oh, yeah, that's all. Oh, uh, that's enough picture, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Oh, come on, all right. We'll head over to my store and get some really good pictures. Oh, uh, just a minute. I have something here for Santa Claus. Here you go, Mr. Kringle. A check in appreciation of all you've done. Ma, I didn't know you were that generous, all right. That's quite a check. What are you going to do with it, Mr. Kringle? I've got no idea what's going on, <laughs> but I absolutely love it. It sounds amazing. Now, just at the back of the auditorium, there is a very special member of this production. I'm hoping, sir, that I might be able to have a chat with you. Oh, by all means. With your, your handsome grey bushy beard. Oh, thank and you. Thank your you. smart red tie <laughs> and overcoat, because you are... Oh, I'm Chris Kringle. So you're a very important man to this production and to this story. It's nice of you to give your time to the town and gown at this time of year, because you must be very busy. Yes, but I wouldn't call myself important. It's the story that's important. And it's so beautiful to be able to come down to Cambridge for this time of year. I mean, don't you think so? It is lovely, and I love the Christmas tree in the corner, which makes it all feel very festive. <laughs> it's wonderful. Have, have you been enjoying seeing people coming in and getting a bit of Christmas this year, when last year things were so different? Oh, yes. I mean, oh, last year is awfully, awfully difficult being able to go around. and so sad to see so many people. But people and I see the smiles of people. That's why I tend to go out on little things like this. Little jaunts whilst the elves are working heavily away in the North Pole. It's too wonderful to be able to come down and see so many smiles around Cambridge. It's delight, really delightful. And in real life, do you say ho, ho, ho? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Doesn't everyone? Santa chuckled so much, like almost every answer started with a ho-ho-ho. Absolutely lovely. I stayed for the show. It's wonderful. It's so much fun. Not only do they sing the songs for the musical, but they also sing all the other little bits that you'd get in a radio show. You know, they sing the jingles. They sing the adverts. It's a lot of fun. It's on until Christmas Eve. Search for Town and Gown Cambridge if you want to book yourself some tickets. <laughs> 